My name is Henry Bermudez. <coughs> I'm Venezuelan artist living in Philadelphia for the last 16 years. As a Venezuelan, I feel so deeply the sorrow, the sadness that my people are living at this right moment. Venezuela is having so hardship and this present and we don't see any escape, any solution created by this corrupt government that we have now. So I dedicate this show to Venezuelan people who are fighting for the freedom and we are from here, encourage them and giving all our support, our spirituality energy to help to resolve this problem as soon as possible. So Henry Bermuda's work is a reflection of his story. It makes him relevant because as an artist from Venezuela, with all the issues going on there, his work shows us that there is hope, that there is life at the intersection of destruction and decay. And so when you see his work in all the flora and, and fauna, you see in those motifs the leaf and other greenery that there's, there's a sense of hope and rejuvenation, renewal. There's this renaissance uh, of life that is profluent in his works. Mexico. Living in Mexico, I learned about 
the mythology of the previous cultures, the pre-Columbian culture, the, the myth of uh, Quetzalcoatl, and Quetzalcoatl was the, the, the supreme god who created the balance between the good and the bad and taught the indigenous how to be good people and how to cultivate and how to build big nice houses. So was the god of the knowledge. Then I have the opportunity to move to New York. New York is a mythological city, full of myth. Everything is grand grandiloquent, everything is the maximum, it is the biggest metropolis ever created with all the biggest and big opportunities. So um, I was in the middle of this city just reflecting about how my art could be engaged in this reality. So I learned about the art market, the music, the gallery, the theater, all was in the superlative way of saying that. Everything in New York was the maximum. Up to you, New York. This is a myth. And using all of this element, I create a mythology. Then I have the opportunity to represent Venezuela at the Venice Bayonia, and I moved to live in Venice. Being, no, sorry, I moved to, to live in Rome. Living in Rome, I got in contact with all of the Renaissance art that for me was a revelation, a revelation of many, many myths that compose the whole creation of the Catholic mythology. So, in conclusion, my work it is a synthesis of all of these elements that have been picked up from different cultures where I have the opportunity to be in contact with and put it in different way to create the mythology of my theme, of my discourse. So, um, my work is mythological not because it reflects the, the tradition or the vision of the past, not only for that, that also it is in there. It is how I connect this mythology with elements of the, our contemporary world. For example, if we move to one of these paintings to see this one, Nube de Agua. Nube de Agua reflects my vision how the nature is connected in a simple. This is the heaven and this is the earth. And in the middle of that, it is a God. The God that I took from the pre-Columbian culture, the indigenous from Peru. This is the rain maker. This leopard represents the God who produced the rain. That's why the Indians represent the hill with the, the rainbow coming from Ibna. When this animal or this cat be was when the rain was produced, fertilizing the earth to produce the flowers and the fruit. In that way, I connect the very uh, traditional myths from Latin American culture, especially the Inca in Peru. But using this material, the glitter, I'm trying to give the idea of contemporary. Contemporary because this is something 
that connect our feelings with art. It's very easy, it's very common in our culture to see art related or made with these materials. So another thing is the acrylic paint. Acrylic is very contemporary art material that I use a lot. So here we have the idea that many myths create a combination of elements create or develop a discourse that become a mythology. In different cultures, 
the relation between individuals and, and God has been different. And the people, the human being, have represented God in different ways through the different different cultures. So I take from in this case the contemporary culture uh, it is the Catholic Catholic mythology. It is the snake from the prohibent tree with the prohibited fruit looking for evil. This is a myth from the our contemporary culture. But at the same time, the snake has the head of one of the gods from the Aztec mythology. Because Quetzalcoatl, who represents this god, is the mixture of a bird and the snake. So I represent this god mythologically through the image of the head of the bird and the body of the snake. Using glitter, again, is a very contemporary material. It's a, a stuff that it is new it's in our society. Even it has been used for many traditional cultures through the world. You can see the use of the glitter in popular cultures in, in India, in Mexico, in Asia. So, the fact that it is a new product, it is an industrial product, and it is used in the contemporary society, make me fear my connection with the contemporary. So, here also, because I was living in Peru for three months, two years ago, I learned from another culture, Inca culture, called Chan Chan, and I took this element from this culture to integrate Mexican, Christian, and Peruvian culture. The background has been inspired by my, stu by my students. I teach a student in different grades and they, when they make their own artwork, they, talk, they teach me how they interpret colors, form, compositions. So I take from them ideas that help me to control my own world. And that way I learn from them. I want to integrate all of them between elements that I can really take from them mm -hmm. and put together in my work. Right. Mixing the myth, creating a new vision of mythology. Right, right. That's right. That's right. right. Yes. But this is at the same time the bronze snake from the Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. Yes. And this is all, all these symbols are from Chan Chan culture from Mexico. Uh -huh. A very ancient culture there, more than 5,000 years. Mm. Chan Chan. Chan Chan. Older than age. Right. You know, so I mix all of them. As you can see, just how stunning and, and, and beautiful the artwork is and, and how deep it is with, um, with meaning and, and it really speaks to me, uh, especially as a cultural anthropologist, as a student of, of Latin American history, art, and culture. Um, you know, Henry's work in this particular exhibition, Totally Mythological, really resonates with me. Um, as you can see here, you see a lot of patterns and, and forms that, that reference uh, you know, organic shapes and, and things that you might see throughout places, subtropical places in Latin America or other parts of the world. Uh, you see here a, a, a serpent, a feathered serpent, which you know, many of us know is, is, a, is a reference to the uh, Mesoamerican feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl. Just lots of really cool patterns and forms that to me um, are in, 
indicative of, of the kinds of style and artwork that you would see in ancient uh, cultures uh, throughout the world. Obviously, Latin America. Um, I see forms here that, that, to me, speak like they could be part of the Far East, um, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, parts of Asia. So, um, you know, Henry's work, uh, and not just in totally mythological, but one thing that I've noticed about Henry's work is there's a lot of implied movement. So obviously it's a painting, so the paintings by their nature are static, but Henry's work, his cutouts, his paintings, always have this implied movement through the different shapes and forms that he's able to use in the artwork. And you see the serpent here coiled with the apple referencing, obviously, uh, you know, Christian uh, creation myths and, and the, uh, the uh, uh, devil giving the apple over to, uh, to Adam and Eve and creating this original sin that we have. Um, but even in the plant forms here, the organic forms, you see spirals and curls and, and the background pattern and a floral motif. So, so, you know, there's always a, a, a dance in, in Henry's artwork, form and, and shape and pattern um, that looks like it could go into motion at, at any moment. Everything are 
is related with the Catholic mythology that used like icons to create elements to create and describe my discourse.